Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I'm starting a new series. I'm making a simple graphical RPG. Once you have learned how to create a very simple role-playing game, it isn't difficult to translate it into the game you want. This series of videos is a continuation of two series, how to create a text adventure and Python, creating a grid. I'll put a link to both of those series in the description below. Here's how I'm going to proceed. I think it will be easiest to show how to code each element and then put them together. In the end, this will make the code a lot easier to understand. Let's look at the dialog box we will see first when we play the game. The information panel dialog. The first thing we need to know is whether the user wants to A. Create a new game B. Load an existing game or C. Quit. Since we're working with a graphical interface, our basic element of interaction is a window. So let's create one. On this window, we will draw three buttons, one for each choice. Create a new game, load an existing game, or quit. If you're a little nervous about constructing a graphical user interface, don't be. It really doesn't get any simpler than what we're about to code. And after you understand the basics, you can create any graphical element you like. Let's get started. It is easiest to contain all the code in one class. That way, all the code is wrapped up nicely and we will be able to simply plug this class into any program we like and use it. Let's step through this. 1a, calling the program. Here's how we instantiate the class. Let's look at the constructor for the info panel class. I'll step through this more or less line by line. First, we initialize Pygame with the line Pygame in it. Then we resize the screen, giving it both a width and a height. Now, it's a nice touch to give the window a caption. So that's the line there, Pi Game Display Set Caption. Also, I want to set the background color of the window to light gray. I'm setting this here in init and then using it in the draw function, which we're going to cover just a little bit later. I use it in the fill command. I'm doing it this way because I like to set all the values I'm going to use throughout the class inside of the init function. It makes reading the code and therefore debugging the code easier, or at least that's what I find. Okay, so now the next line, we're going to set the font, and this sets the font throughout the entire class. Pygame comes with a built-in default font, one that can be accessed by passing none as the font name, and that's what I've done here. Let's set up some buttons. We're going to be using all sorts of rectangles, so let's unpack what's happening here. Pygame rectangles can be created in a number of ways. Here are the two I use most often, and you can see that up on the screen there. Here's a figure I took from stackoverflow.com. It helps explain rectangles, the values that you feed into them, what comes out, that sort of thing. I thought it was helpful, so I'm including it. I've also put a link to the page that I got it from in the description below. So here you can see left equals 10, top equals 10, width equals 250 minus 20, which is 230, and height is 215. The other two lines are self-explanatory. We set up two more rectangles, so we do this again two more times, creating rectangles for load game and quit game. We then initialize the remaining instance wide variables, those three at the bottom. We've gone through the constructor in it. Now let's set things in motion by calling my dialog.main. So three, the main loop. We've seen this code before, but now we're going to be calling my dialog main. Here's the code for that function. This is the basic pattern for any graphical element I will create with Pygame. So I'm going to examine it in some detail. You will recall that we initialized the clock previously. Also, we set keep looping to true, and that's an instance wide variable. Normally, we would have events update and then draw. Since this is a very simple function, nothing changes, and so there is nothing to update. Now let's take a peek at events for the events function. So you can see that up there on the screen now. By the way, I was helped by a bit of code I found over at stackoverflow.com. I've put a link to that in the description below. As you can see, this loop is aware of all Pygame events. If the user clicks the window close, then Pygame quit will be the event type, and we will want to exit the program. We exit the program by setting self keep looping equals false. But let's say that we haven't closed the window. Let's say we simply press the key. In that case, if the event type is key down, then we take a look at which key was pressed. And you can see those three lines on the screen now. Here, since the program is so simple, the only key we are looking for is the escape key. If the escape key is used, then we set keep looping to false and exit the loop. Okay, the next four lines of code are the most important in this entire function. If we've pressed a mouse button, then we test to see 
we try to detect which button was pressed, left, center, or right. Here we are only interested in the left mouse button. If it has been pressed, then we grab the position of the mouse. Notice that we are making the position of the mouse available throughout the instance of the class. 5. Draw function. Again, we've seen this function before, but now we're going to look at self-draw. There's that code on the screen. The first thing we are going to do is fill the background, and I've mentioned this before. There is the self BG color. We've set that to light gray, and that's going to cover over everything on our drawing surface. All the work here is being done in the utility function, and you can see the code up there on the screen. Notice the line inner area equals pi game rect. This line returns us the inner area, and the inner area will come in useful if we want to center the text within the rectangle, and as it happens, I do. The next line, pi game draw rect, draws the rectangle with the selected background color, but we still have to render the text and draw it on the surface. So text surface, that contains the rendered text. Then if the Boolean variable user inner is true, then we use the inner area, and if it's not, then we don't. Simple. 5c back to the draw function. 5D, now let's analyze the input. Since the next two calls to draw a text button work the same way, I won't go over them. Now notice the line, if not self, mouse position equals none. So what we're interested in is the case in which mouse position contains some value. So if we've clicked something, we need to see if we clicked on a button or we just clicked on the background window. We do this by testing each button in turn. New game result will tell us whether or not the new game button was clicked. And if it was clicked, new game result will contain a one. And if it wasn't clicked, new game result will contain a zero. And that works the same, obviously, for load game result and quit result. We use collide point to tell us whether a given point is inside the indicated rectangle. We now reset the mouse position to none and then figure out whether a button was pressed and if so, which one. And note, like I said before, a person can click the window without clicking a button. Depending upon which button was pressed, we figure out the correct message, new game, load game, or quit. Once the message is set, we set keep looping defaults because we want to exit the dialog. Finally, we get to 5e, pi game display flip. This is arguably the most important line in the entire program. Nothing is getting drawn to the screen unless we flip the display surface. Okay, that's it. Let's run the program. 5F, finished program. It's a very simple program, so this isn't much, but I've included a movie here at the end that shows you the dialog box in action. Thank you for watching. If you got something from the video, please like and subscribe. I'm going to try to put out regular videos every day or every second day. As always, I welcome your comments. I'll see you in the next video, and until then, good coding.